Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome. I'm so glad you're part of the program today. Thanks for joining us. My Bible is open again to the very last verse of the book of 2 Peter. Today will be the final study time in the book of 2 Peter. We've been here for a while. We've gone through this book verse by verse, line by line, really, and we finish it today with the last statement made in 2 Peter and the third chapter and verse 18. So if you can, reach over and get your Bible and join me there. Get something on which you can jot some notes because... Well, we're going to be a little bit theological today, but not so much that we can't be practical along the way. Doctrine is a great word. It simply means to be a teaching time. Doctrine is teaching, but to teach and not make practical what you're teaching is not wise. We want to make what we're teaching today very, very practical. So if you can, get your Bible and get something on which you can jot some notes. I've got a gospel tract here in my hand I want to talk to you about. I'll talk about that here in just a second, but let me lead into our study time this way. Some time ago, I was watching a question and answer session. You see, a well-known Christian apologist had given a speech at a secular university, and afterwards, many of the students came and got in line to ask questions. One question was basically this, and I'm paraphrasing now. It said, if all creation and all people and all events are to be done for God's glory, then doesn't that make God the most egotistical being in the universe? Well, that was the student's question. And frankly, the tone of his voice, he was trying to be somewhat of a show-off. Well, perhaps you have met people who were, the big fancy word is a narcissist. That's the fancy word for somebody who's in love with their own being and feels like the rest of the world exists just for their benefit. When I heard that student ask that question, my mind immediately began to spin and I began to ask myself, how would I answer it? Today, we're going to look at the final words of the book of 2 Peter, which say this, To him, to God, be glory both now and forever. Amen. Now, throughout all eternity, God will be receiving honor and glory. It will never end. Now, does that fact mean that God is a narcissist, an egotistical being, or does it just declare a fact about God that is so truthful and so accurate that he really does deserve endless glory? That's where we're headed. Get your Bible and something to jot down some notes with, won't you please? I mentioned a gospel tract here a moment ago. That word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. It's an evangelism tool. It's a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. And I want to give you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracts. And one of them is this one entitled, Seven Questions Boys and Girls Ask. Seven Questions Boys and Girls Ask ask. Children ought to be given the gospel. Children are to be told of the great love of God, their sinfulness, and they are to be told of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, that Christ died for them. But this gospel tract helps a parent, helps a grandparent, helps a Sunday school teacher, helps a release time teacher, whatever the case may be, when somebody's dealing with a child, maybe it's a neighborhood child, that you can help share the gospel with them. Seven questions boys and girls ask. Questions like this. Who is God? Who is Jesus? Where did we come from? Who is the devil? It leads up to this. What happens when people die? And how can I know I'm going to heaven? This is a clear, good track for kiddos. Please let me send it to you. At the end of the program, my announcer 
will make known three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Do that today, and we'll send that sample packet out normally in the next business day's mail. If you can't wait to the end of the program, go to our website, Bible Tracks Inc. Dot org Bible, you know how to spell. The word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. Inc. is I-N-C. BibleTracksInc.org. Get that sample packet. Order it today. The last verse of 2 Peter 3, the last, book of the, the last verse of the book says this, But grow in grace and in knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Now, our verse says that God will be glorified forever. Do you know what it means to glorify God? That's a term we use a lot. Well, when we glorify a person, just a a regular person, whether it be an athlete, a police officer, a parent, or whatever, when we glorify a person, we are simply turning the spotlight onto them and putting them in focus for all to see. We're making them the center of attention, and we are rehearsing the reasons why we're giving them this honor. That is really what it means to glorify God. We are turning the spotlight onto him and onto him alone. We are rehearsing his deeds and his character that are behind the glory, this spotlight being shown there. Keep this in mind. Please keep this in mind. God is perfect in his holiness. God is perfect in his righteousness. God is perfect in his love and goodness. He is the only perfect one, and therefore, he is the one who is, number one, the one who ought to to be receiving glory because he's perfect. And number two, he's the only one that can receive glory without it altering his perfect character. God cannot change. Amen. The book of James says that. God can and will receive glory, but it will never alter him. It will never make him egotistical. It's impossible for him to become a narcissist. If he could have any of that happen, then he would have changed and he would no longer be perfect. But that can't happen. Let me give you three reasons why God will receive glory forever and ever. Number one is this. Creation was designed to glorify God. Now, that's probably well known to you. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1, God made the heavens and the earth and so on. And at the end of each of the six days of creation, we find that God said, it was good. It was good. And at the end of the sixth day, when God made man, God said, it is very good. And then he rested. It was perfect. Psalm 19.1 says that the heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament showeth his handiwork. Over in the book of Romans, chapter 1, we're told this in verse 20. The invisible things of him, of God, from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even God's eternal power and Godhead. Simply stated, we're told there that the whole program of creation turns mankind's focus onto God, onto his power, onto his intellect, and onto his righteousness. Creation was designed to bring glory to God. God is going to remake this world, and it will bring glory to God in utter perfection. Secondly, the Bible says that salvation was done to glorify God. Now, when we think of salvation, yes, those of us who are saved, we certainly are benefited by our salvation, but our benefit is a secondary consequence. The main reason God wrought, God worked this thing called salvation is so that he might be glorified. Many of you are familiar with how Ephesians chapter 2 begins. Ephesians 2, 1 says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. And it goes on there. But if I go down to verse 4, 5, 6, and 7 of Ephesians 2, here is what the Bible is going to say. Beginning in verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy... 
for or due to his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Listen now, so that, so that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Friend, God saves us so that his grace and his kindness towards sinners can turn the spotlight onto his person, onto his love, onto his grace. Glory to God, you and I benefit from salvation, but salvation is first and foremost to glorify the God who designed it and worked the salvation plan. But number three, Here's a big word for you. Predestination will be done to glorify God. I'm going to say that word again. Predestination will be done to the glory of God. Predestination is the work of God, his sovereign work, I might add, by which he predetermines ahead of time or he makes certain ahead of time what he will do with all believers. The Bible says he is going to conform us. He is going to transform us into the likeness of his son, Jesus. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11 and 12 says this, In Christ also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his will, that purpose statement now, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. In the famous passage out of Romans chapter 8, Romans 8, 29 tells us there that for he, God, did foreknow, for whom God did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. Now, listen, friend, listen carefully. In salvation, in the salvation of sinners, God is glorified because of how low into the depths of sinfulness his redeeming love had to reach. But in predestination, God is glorified because of how high his power to change lives can alter sinners. I'm going to say that again. In salvation, God is glorified because of how low into the dregs and depths of sinfulness God's redeeming love could reach. But in the work of predestination, God is glorified because of how high his power to change lives can be demonstrated in how he alters and changes us forever. For all eternity, testimony after testimony is going to be shared about God's saving grace and his transforming grace. So tell me, are you and I actively participating in God's transforming work today? Are we letting the spotlight or the attention to shine on Christ today by our willful acting to see God change us? The day for God to be glorified is not in the future. It's going to happen then, but the day for God to be glorified in our lives is today. Let's God be glorified in us. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website, Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.